All right, here we are. Cyclops, stage is yours. Welcome to my black screen. Hello, everybody. Right, so before we begin the showcase, there are a couple things I just want to quickly explain just so that this runs smoothly and you all understand the format and what I'm going to be going through. So essentially, what you're going to be seeing is alternating between real live gameplay and then the game's built-in replay system. So the real live gameplay is going to be sort of demonstrating a more traditional approach to the level so you can get a sense for what the level's going to be. I wouldn't normally do that, but since these are custom levels, most people aren't going to be very familiar with them, so I want to give a little bit of background into the levels. And second, I do want to expand on something that was mentioned during the commentary of the uh, community pack, which is that for all intents and purposes, the game's physics do behave deterministically because the game runs at a constant frame rate, but it is actually a non-deterministic physics engine, which means that it calculates physics once per frame and then not between the frames. Now, that might sort of go over your head, but all you really need to understand about that is that um, what it means is that when you approach any form of collision, any sort of strat that involves getting a clip off of an edge, a specific speed and direction, is going to be inherently consistent because there are like hundreds of different possible outcomes of getting that clip that vary based on your position, speed, and angle. And what it also means is that the faster you're going, the more inconsistent it's going to be. So you can end up going anywhere from clipping really low and saving your speed to clipping really high and losing all your speed, or in some cases, like I'm going to demonstrate right here before we get started, you can just roll over edges like this. You just dip below the edge and completely roll over it. So that is your primer on this game's physics and how collision works. So I'm ready, I'm ready to start the timer. We're going to get going into the showcase in three, two, one, go. So the first stage we're going to be looking at is called Whisk. It's from Super Monkey Ball Gaiden. Most of the levels we're going to be looking at are in Gaiden. And you can see that there are a lot of rotating, plat rotating objects that sort of move around and try to knock you off the platform. But being in a task, we can just take advantage of them moving at a strange angle and hit across to the goal and clip off some holes. The next level is called Unwind. And the thing about Unwind is that it's all wrapped up and then you go to the middle and hit a button and the level unwinds as the name calls which gives you the room to build up speed to get to the goal but we can actually take advantage of the unwinding animation and just hit straight into the goal so the next level is going to be the first big level of the showcase this is battle royale we stop a moving wormhole and drop to a random location in the level and what you can see is there's a goal underneath the level here there are actually four of them and the goals are all below the kill plane so what you need to do is hit a button to bring the goal up and then you can make your way across the level, cross some obstacles, and get to the goal. But the interesting thing is that if you hit the button at a very specific angle, you can get redirected entirely sideways, and that gives you the speed to reach the goal as it's rising up and get it just as it goes above the kill plane. Which is absolutely impossible for a human to do. So the next level is called Tug, and it's going to take advantage of the game's conveyors in a creative way. It's going to be moving in two different directions, and it's a pretty long level. You have to go up a spiral and then either take a long wire with conveyors pushing you or wait for a platform. But, of course, waiting is pretty slow, so we're going to go ahead and skip over all of that by just hopping the platform, grinding up the spiral, and then getting some glitchy collision to finish by landing between the party ball and the goalpost, which is something that we call a side goal. So the next level is a rotating maze called Pattern Prism. It rotates every six seconds, and you sort of have to make sure that you're in an appropriate position to make sure that you don't get thrown off the edge. However, of course, we can try as many times as we like, so let's just throw ourselves at a goal that's not even right side up and not even get close to the goal tape. Let's just take a look at this. By all accounts, that doesn't make sense. So the next level, I'm not actually going to show gameplay, but this is Perimeter. It is a very large level. You start up at the top and end by that little half loop. And that gives you a lot of room to build up some speed, but if you build up just enough speed, you can get a hit off of this corner and skip over the gap that separates the first half of the level from the second, and that saves about four seconds overall. The next level we're going to be looking at is Departure, which is a long obstacle course where you're basically racing a... Um, moving tube that's running down some tracks and once you reach the tube you can hop into it 
and it carries you down the tracks to the rest end of the level. But of course, this involves a lot of waiting. It is very slow. You just sit around for a while. So we can build up a lot of speed, skip over not just the obstacles, but the tube itself, and fly straight to the goal. So the next level we're looking at is called Rigidify, and the way this level works is that there are three different wormholes, two different wormholes, three different levels, and the wormholes take you up each level and it gets more rigid each time. However, the interesting thing about wormholes is that in the vanilla game, they don't, they, they don't actually have any solid objects, they're just planes, and then there's an object built around them. And in a lot of hacks, there's no object there, so you can just go through the back of them. So the next level is Seismic, and this level's actually a totally infamous level in speedruns because it can just fling you off whenever it feels like it. But as you might be expecting at this point, we can take advantage of that and get what's called the glitch goal, where you don't actually break the goal tape, you just sort of hit off the goal. And... just... This game makes no sense. Like, how are we supposed to do think about that? But this is probably the most unique level in the entire hack. It's called Phantasm, and the way this level works is that you make your way across invisible platforms to hit a button. And that flips up a wormhole that allows you to go up to the second level. And you're supposed to use these bananas as sort of like guidelines where the platform is. And that means that you can't collect all of them or else you won't have a guide on your way back. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well on a task you don't need to know where the platform is so you don't need to save the bananas. You can go really fast. Well that's true, but you also don't need to actually move the wormhole in the first place. You can just get it while it's upside down. And then you also don't need to flip the goal up. You can just hit the button and fly up to the goal. Now. We've been looking at score time tasks this whole time, but there's an entire unexplored area in this showcase so far, which is score. And scores are typically pretty popular because the way they work is that you have to balance getting a fast time with collecting bananas. And these are like banana bunches. There are four back here on this level. There's one here. They're all spread out. It's very difficult to get a good number of bananas on this stage because they're so spread out and they're all on thin wires. And you have to hit this fast forward button here to even get the first four banana bunches. So while the first four banana bunches are pretty easy to collect for a human, once you get those, the level is moving at double speed, and it's incredibly difficult to just navigate the level on its own, much less actually connect the banana bunches. But in TAS, we obviously don't need to care about any of that, because we have as many tries as we want. So we're just gonna get absolutely perfect collision and bounce perfectly between all these banana bunches to reach the goal. Our next level is called Rays, and this is an interesting level because you actually don't want to hit any of these buttons. You can see that there are walls on the sides, off to the side, like right over here. And they're actually a little bit offset, but if you hit a button, the walls come in and will knock you off. And it's very fast and very violent. So typically in a real situation, you want to avoid that, but they're also offset from each other, so they're not perfectly in line. And because of that, we can very, very perfectly squeeze between them, just like that. By all accounts, that should not work, but you can position yourself perfectly to make it work. I want to take a moment to highlight this level called Visionary, where there are three sets of two buttons, and each of them has different design elements. And by hitting those three buttons and then hitting this button, you make your own level, and there are so many different combinations that you can make. But the important thing is that the level sort of flies in from the side. So not only can you not really easily skip anything because you have to wait for it to fly in, but if you try to, you could get hit by it as it's coming in. So the only real solution is to not just clip off of the button that brings it in, but hit the level on the frame that it stops moving. And that lets you get in very quickly. Now this level is called Factory, and the parts of the level are moving from right to left, and they get picked up on the right side and brought back over to the picked up on the left side and brought back over to the right side. But what you can see here is that they sort of just swing down violently as they get put back into place. And if you've been following along with the showcase, you can probably already figure out where this is going. We can gain a bit of extra speed by getting smacked down by that object that we're not really supposed to interact with in that way. And speaking of not being supposed to interact with objects in a certain way, in this level you can see that the platform is rotating, and there are hammers in the background that indicate when the level is going to rotate. But you can see that the hammers are also moving pretty quickly, and if you've learned anything at this point it's that moving objects are very good for task purposes, because we can just bounce right off of that and skip over the entire gap to head straight to the goal. Now this level, Colossus, is actually a bit of a doozy. There are 
There's this giant colossus you can see in the background. It's got a gun that it tries to shoot you with, and it has a sword that it tries to uh, knock you off the platform with. So we have to dodge the bullets and the gun, then the sword, but use the sword shockwave to knock us up onto this platform, where we can then climb up onto the arm and rotate around to hit the button. And this button opens up the colossus's front. And then we can make our way down and travel through this very long cycle-based platforming section. And obviously... We're speedrunners, we don't want to go through cycle-based platforming, that is slow. So, we're going to have to use two different skips to get to the top of this level much faster. The first one has been done by humans, but the second one, I'm pretty sure has not yet. So the first skip, we are going to gain a bit of speed and clip here, and then bounce off the top of a bullet, and that gives us just enough speed to get to the top of the Colossus. And now we can open this up, get hit up by the gun, to get a huge amount of speed upward, and that gives us just enough height to bounce up and skip all of the cycle-based platforming there. Now, this level is apparatus, this is the longest level in the game casually, because the way it works is it's an obstacle course that you have to run four times to hit four different buttons, and every single button you hit makes the obstacle course more complicated. It blocks off one section and brings down another section from up in the sky, and each time you hit one of those buttons, it builds part of the path to the goal. Now, something I haven't mentioned, but I'm going to be mentioning now because it's relevant, is that I got my start in tasking this game by tasking stunts. I didn't actually task times or scores until a very long time after I started tasking the game. So, I'm going to give a bit of time for some donation reading so I can rest my uh, voice a bit and let you appreciate this upcoming 50 second stunt where I'm just going to play around with objects without bringing them down. All right, sounds good, Cyclops. Well, we do have some donations to be read. With uh, Mr. Underscore Shasta giving some more money, this time $36, simply saying, RAT! And Rat. then Nixon Blossoms comes in with $35, saying, If Morris has a million fans, I am one of them. If Morris has 10 fans, I am one of them. If Morris has one fan, that fan is me. If Morris has no fans, that means I am no more on the earth. If the world is against Morris, I am against the world. Also, Lori is pretty pog. And Vixen just sent in another donation, this time on $20, simply saying, Oh my gosh, how many times is this? Um I'm just gonna I'm just gonna improvise. Rat 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 pretty much. And uh yeah, that 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 definitely. Um, defi I agree. Yeah, rat. They definitely Please. put Morse in the lead for our rolled out bid war. So, um, but just remember that there's still time to get those donations in if you want to see a particular character because we still got Chartreuse and Snow Cone. And um, yeah, just a reminder: rolled out is coming up next. Please donate for rat. Anyway, so we have the next level is called Exodus. It's a series of moving obstacles with little platforms in between them, but I'm going to draw your attention to one obstacle in particular, which is the second obstacle on the course. And that obstacle is a series of moving objects that have bounce pads, powerful bounce pads attached to them. They're set off to the side so you can't really get hit forward with them, and if you touch one of these bounce pads, you get launched at about 90 miles an hour. So they're sort of set up in a way that makes it really difficult to abuse them, but we're tasked. We can abuse whatever we want in this game. Like so. The human record for that stage is about a second and a half shorter. So the next level is Pandora's Box, and this level is a doozy because we're sort of navigating an obstacle course that isn't turned on right now, and there's a box that we're sort of circling in the middle of the stage. And we're going to make our way over to this button, and this button will sort of make the stage come to life. A whole bunch of stuff is going to come out of the box and completely change the obstacle course. So what you're going to see here is that this one wire now has a wall trying to push you off. This platform is now wobbling a whole lot. This platform that we made our way across is now just a thin wire, but we're actually not going to pay attention to very much of this at all because we can not just skip over the entire inactive obstacle course, but we're going to once again make use of an object that we're not really supposed to interact with, open up the box, and then hit off of this object as it flips out of the box and use that to flick ourselves up to the goal and get a little bit of lag as a reward. So the next level is Ouroboros, and this level is an auto-scroller. It is a 60 second or 30 second if you hit the fast button. It's essentially just you're navigating this obstacle course as it rolls its way towards that goal in the distance. So what you're about to see is actually the only task in the showcase that wasn't made by me, and I'll be sort of like giving credits at the very end, but this next task was made by Nambo. 
I had so much trouble trying to even get close to replicating this. But why would you ever wait for the auto scroller when you can simply just climb up on top of somewhere you're not supposed to be and then give your monkey wings? That monkey definitely drank some Red Bull. Anyway, so we're going to head over to Red Sea, which is the last level we're going to look at in the Gaiden story mode, the Super Monkey Ball Gaiden story mode. It's sort of a, a standard balance platforming level, but with the added difficulty of this moving red platform. If you hit this, you get launched up into the fan above you and instantly die. But we are known in the task business for cheating death, so what we're going to do instead is just bounce up right in the middle of the fan where it's moving the slowest, and that allows us to redirect momentum down like that. So the next hack, we're only going to look at a couple of levels from this hack, but this is Super Monkey Ball 651. This is World 10 of this hack, and this is generally considered to be the hardest world in standard Monkey Ball hacks, not for a hack that's, like, made to be difficult. Now, what you're going to see here is that we've just navigated a 30-second level, and we've hit a button instead of reaching the goal, and the button says we got to go back to the start. So not only have we just spent 30, mi 30 seconds doing very precise movement, we now have to do that all the way back. And even with this person, who's very good at the game, it takes them almost the entire time to get all the way back. Thankfully, we can just sort of ignore that by using a whole bunch of clips to build speed, and again, give the monkey some wings. I'm just waiting for the, the winged character- I'm just waiting for the winged character in rollout so that we can actually fly. And just a nice nonsense goal for measure. Now the, la the second and last level we're showing off in 651 is a level called Unlock, where you have this platform that flips back and forth 90 degrees every 5 seconds, and there are 6 buttons, 3 on each side. Your goal in this level is to hit all 6 buttons to open up the 7th button at one end of the platform, which then opens you up to the goal at the other end of the platform. And fortunately, we can skip over all of that just by using some clever movement to get picked up by the platform as it flips. Now. The, the For the final tasks in the showcase, we're going to go back to Gaiden, we're going to go into Master Mode. And this is a sort of a gauntlet level called Acheron. I'm not going to fully explain the level because it's 90 seconds, but bas basically we have to get back to the start at a higher elevation so we can get the speed to go up this hill, cross a couple of spiral auto-scrollers, and basically just build up enough speed so that we can jump over to the goal right here. And that takes a good player over 90 seconds, over half of the level's time. But in this task that has never before been seen, except by me, I'm just going to let it speak for itself. So... I hope you've enjoyed my little showcase. That was a lot of fun to put together, and I want to give some credits. First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Deadly Cutsman, who was the level designer for the Super Monkey Ball Gaiden hack, and to Scrap651, who did the designs for the Super Monkey Ball 651 hack, which you might have figured out just by the number. I also want to shout out The Walker and Nambo, who helped provide footage for this showcase. You can see whichever monkeys were have their have their names on it they provided that footage walker provided a whole bunch of footage of clean gameplay on levels that i'm simply not good enough to do and nambo provided that one task on ouroboros that was absolutely impossible for me to match because even he himself said that he got lucky with that one so thank you to everybody who came out i hope you really enjoyed the showcase it was a whole lot of fun to put on and please check out monkey ball realm hacks because the community is thriving right now and we are just they're just killing it. I'm so proud of these guys. I want everyone to see what they've got to show. All right. Well, thank you very much for that wonderful showcase. And I just want to say that was nothing short of awesome. Any um, other things you'd like to say before we um, get ready for our next run? Rat. <laughs> Rat, indeed. All right, folks. Coming up next is Rolled Out. So stay tuned. And, uh, yeah. Rat. Rat.